customer states I think I need bag brakes Yep, they definitely need brakes. Let's start off by removing all of the lug nuts. Take the wheel and place the wheel underneath the car just in case. Same thing on the other side. We'll put that one underneath the car as well. Take a little quick peek underneath where the brake line's been dripping. Nice and crusty. Outside's not looking too much better. Okay, back to the job at hand. Let's get this caliper removed. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. shouldn't be in there that all too too tight. See if we got a little bit of movement in there. Let's get these caliper bracket bolts loosened up too. Now you guys are still gonna hear some background noise. I'm doing a dub over. Mostly because the construction noise in the background is so loud that you know, I'm sure nobody here wanted to listen to it. So, what I basically did is I recorded it uh, with the audio and then I've just dropped the audio down so you can kind of still hear it a little bit here and there, but I can get my point across without having to yell. Finish getting these uh, caliper practice bolts out. bracket bolts. We remove both of them. Using a screwdriver we're going to try putting a little pressure on it to push the piston back just enough to be able to get the caliper off. Knock some of the crap out of it. Everything falls apart when you bang on it. Set this someplace safe for the moment. It's not heavy enough to hurt the cable, but then again, we don't want it to fall freely and then yank on the hose either. Brake pads are kind of moving. Let's finish getting those bracket bolts the rest of the way out. too too bad. There's the bracket with the brake pads still in it. Right off the bat I'm noticing a couple of problems with the orientation of the brake pads that are in there. Uh, that's the inner and the inner is the outer. They've got them switched around. These are six millimeter thread 
by one and a half inch or one and a half pitch. Uh, screw both of those in, bottom them out, and then little by little back and forth, start applying some pressure to them, and they'll help walk the rotor off of the hub. Takes a lot of the flight out of it. There's your crusty looking rotor. See the, the fine groove? That's where it's been rubbing against the backing plate. Put the old rotor in the box, keep it from blowing away in a gust of wind. And we're going to take the new rotor, set the new rotor up on top of it so we've got a surface to clean it off on. We'll saturate a cloth with some brake fluid, so or brake cleaner, so we're not spraying it all into the air. This will at least break down the initial layer of oil that's on the rotor to protect it you know, from rusting. Get it all nice and clean, both sides. Don't forget to get inside the uh, brake drum for the parking brake. Get the outside of the rotor nice and clean. Don't worry about any of the dust or film you leave behind. Now we're going to clean up the hub. Get any scale or anything off of there that might cause a wobble or pulsation in the brakes. We're going to fold a cloth over and put it behind the hub but over the brake shoes. This way here when we spray some rust preventative on it, we can get a nice coating on without getting any of it on the mating surfaces of the brake shoes. Pull that back out of the way and we're ready to put the new rotor on. Normally I would get into how you adjust the parking brake and all of that, but for sake of time, considering the other things that we're going to have to do to this car, uh, I'm just going to keep this one kind of short. The parking brakes didn't need any adjustment. But I do have some other videos out there for parking brake adjustment if you want to see the proper procedures for doing it so that you don't, don't end up with brakes that unexpectedly drag on you. Let's get the old brake pads out of the bracket. Sometimes they don't like coming out. Don't be afraid to use something as a hammer. That's the uh, inboard pad, not the outboard pad. They got that one messed up. And this one here is worn pretty thin. I didn't do a very good job with the camera angle on it, sorry. Um, this side they were both worn extremely thin. One side was actually metal, to, the inboard was metal to metal. Let's get the hardware clips removed. They're called abutment clips. There's no wear or damage to them. You can, in some cases if you need to you can clean them up and reuse them but because I like to use brand new ones all the time I just don't bother. Check the condition of your pins. They're good. We'll be adding some well, cleaning and adding some grease to those in a little bit. Right now, let's get some of this loose crap off of the caliper bracket so we can see what we're working with. And this is this is where the uh, elbow grease starts really coming in, get warmed up for the filing. But right now, I'm just loose knocking off the loose stuff, and then you guys can see. Here what we've got is a very rusty surface. There's some scaling on there, so I'm going to be doing some filing and banging to chip it and try to get it off of there. It's a nice flat file. And going straight level across the grooves. You want to clean everything up. You don't want to go cutting it at an angle. 
a little banging on it here and it all helps to chip away some of the scale. Uh, don't blow into the wind with the dust. Stuff's bad for you. Shouldn't be blowing on it at all. I should be using brake cleaner. The pins look good. That one's missing the little rubber piece, however. And it doesn't seem to be down inside the bore. So somebody put this together without it. Spray some brake clean down in there, making sure not to aim towards your face. You don't want to get this sprayed back into your face. And you can use the pin just to work it, or work it around, get the old grease loosened up in there, help clean it out. And just basically, with the brake cleaner, you're agitating everything inside, breaking it up. And as long as it moves freely, you can just rinse it out and re-grease the pin, put the pin back in. Rinse the bore out real good. You can see down inside there, it's all nice and clean. Put a little fresh grease on the pin. Work the grease down into the boot, lubricate the inside of the boot so the boot doesn't dry out. Get some of this extra grease off the pin. We'll pick it up on the way back in. Just work it back and forth a few times. The whole idea is you want to make sure everything in there is coated, but you don't have so much in there that you get the vapor lock. Everything looks good. Do the other side. Wipe all the grease off. Look for any pits or wear. Spray some more brake cleaner down inside the bracket. Again, make sure you're not aiming towards your face. Fill it up a little bit and get working away with the pen. Check to see how well you're doing and getting it all broke up in there. Rinse it out. Everything down in there looks good. Now put some grease on the pan. Again, just Get it on the inside of the boot, distribute it around, coat the inside of the boot. It'll help keep it from drying out. And then twist it back and forth to equally distribute the grease. Work it in and out, get the wrinkle wrinkle. And then that's all set. Checked. Still some more scaling on here. We got a lot of rust up here. Salt gets in between and it just goes to town. In between the, uh, the abutment clip and the, the bracket. And then sometimes it'll pit it pretty good. But you want to take as little, if any, metal off. You, you really you don't want to change the dimensions. But you don't want to have so much left in there that it's got your brake pads jacked into place. So now we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on it. Aluminum anti-seize. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just don't want it to heat up, melt, and, and or rinse away coat all of the surfaces that the abutment clip is going to come in contact with. Uh, not thick globs or anything like that, just kind of a good coating, but not too much because you don't want any of this to squeeze out and end up on the rotor because then it'll end up on your brake pad surface. Both 
both sides. Obviously, I forgot the camera was not able to see. Be kind of careful with this stuff because once it gets somewhere else, it just keeps spreading. Access off the outside so we don't rub it against the rotor. Now this isn't the kind of brake job that you'll usually see done in a shop around here or anywhere for that matter. This, this, this level of attention to detail is something they don't have the time to do. So this is one of the benefits of doing a brake job yourself. Now all your brake pads you need to take close attention to these and make sure that there aren't any differences between them. If there are, that it varies from side to side or inside to outside, you know, inboard, outboard brake pad. These right here, the little squeal clips, they snap onto the brake pad, so we want to put it on the leading edge of the inboard pad, the pad that's touching up against the piston. It just snaps on, gives you a little bit of an edge where it's going to rub against your rotor before your brake pad goes metal to metal. That goes on the inside leading edge. And then there's where the outboard goes. Now holding the bracket, get their bracket relationship so that you can get your bearings as to which way it fits. You put in your brake pads. We're going to grab the new abutment clips, make sure that they're all the same. Sometimes they vary from top to bottom, right to left. In this case, we're lucky, all four are exactly the same. Make absolutely sure, because sometimes there can be the most subtle difference. Now we're going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on the caliper and bracket bolts. Uh, it will help to keep the bolts from seizing into place due to rust as well as make sure that vibration doesn't cause them to back out should they decide to start loosening up for some reason. As long as we get everything cleaned appropriately that should not be an issue. And all we need to do is just get one oh, all over my thumb. Ugh. You can't get just one drop out of these things you know. But that's all we need, one drop on each bolt. And actually we're going to get some of the air out of there and then put the cap back on. These get warmed up in the sun, you take the cap off and it just oozes out all over the place. So. Being a mobile mechanic, you can't count on anything that you have staying in a stable temperature environment. Now that we've got the bracket ready, we get the clips in. You just make sure they're centered. They should snap right down in. You shouldn't have to fight with them. They should sit in there naturally. Um, sometimes they're a little stubborn. There's uh, some claws that lock them in place that can be a little hard to overcome but as long as it's good quality hardware and the brackets cleaned up appropriately they will literally snap right into place uh, once you've done that take one of your brake pads one of the outboards and just run it in and out of the, the position that it's going to be sitting in just to get a feel for things you don't want this to get stuck in there you don't want to have to fight with it you want it to move around rather rather easily. The only resistance that you're going to have here is the back side where it springs against the shoe to, or the pad to keep it from rattling. These edges right here are the edges that are so incredibly criti critical because they're the ones that carry all the load. These edges just hold the ear in place so that the brake pad doesn't move anywhere. It locks it right into the bracket into the groove. If there's rust jacking underneath it will push the clips out and they'll pinch against the brake and you won't be able to get the brake pad to move. 
This is why we use the uh, anti-seize on the caliper bracket before putting the abutment clips on. And then we'll get the uh, other brake pad in place. And then we're going to go bolt the caliper back in place. And as we do so, we realize that we just made a mistake. That's the inboard, not the outboard. I put them in backwards. And speaking of backwards, always make sure that the material is facing the rotor, not the painted surface of the brake pad. I've seen that one happen twice. Once I was responsible for it myself, but that was because I had a little too much to drink while I was doing that brake job. And, uh, we'll caliper bracket bolts, put them back in place basically get them started. Once you get one started it makes it easier to line up the second one. And then basically just start to run them down in by hand if you can. If not, grab the wrench and run them all the way down. And what I like to do is leave them a little bit loose until I get both of them kind of snug, check so the bracket rattles around a little bit. It'll help to set it naturally so it's less likely to warp. Once you've got it in place and everything's comfortable, then you go ahead and snug those bolts down. Get back in here and snug up these caliper bracket bolts. And the torque on those, if you're using a torque wrench, is 48.7 foot pounds. You can just call it 49. Make sure both of them are nice and snug. everything's in place. Put the caliper over the brake pads. We have to push the piston back. Use just a pair of channel lock, lock pliers for these. Just be careful not to puncture the piston boot. Nice even pressure pushing the piston back in. If you have any problems you're going to just better off putting a new caliper in. But if it goes back nice and smoothly, no problems, just go ahead Make sure your brake cable is not twisted. Place it back down over your brake pads. And get your slide pins lined up. And then go ahead and put in the two caliper bolts. They've already got the Loctite on them that we put on. Sometimes you have to fight with them a little bit, get everything to line up just right, but once everything's lined up, as long as there isn't any rust on the bolts, you should be able to spin them all the way in by hand. Make sure everything moves. Go ahead and tighten down those bolts. They're both 14 millimeter, both the bracket bolt and the caliper bolts. And these are tightened down to 19.9 foot pounds, or we'll just call it 20 foot pounds. They're not super, super, super tight. Now we're 
having a problem with it binding up at this point because of the rust buildup on the caliper backing plates. Uh, we'll be taking care of that down the road. I'm not going to be filming that part. Bleed screw. We're going to need to loosen that up. We're going to need to bleed the system out, get fresh fluid in it. But we're also going to be dealing with replacing brake lines. That'll be in the next video. Now, most of the time these bleeders are stuck. They, they don't want to move. And if you really push them, they will snap off. So what I like to do, instead of snapping them off, is take a handle of a ratchet or a small hammer, not a large hammer, and just tap on the wrench while applying a light load to it. And if you're persistent enough, sooner or later, it will eventually give up and it will start to move. Now, don't take the fact that it starts to move isn't okay to go ahead and just suddenly loosen it up. Nope. You want to change the direction. You want to go back to the tight spot again and repeat the process to loosen it up some more. Again, real careful with them, work them back and forth a little bit, and then they should come right out, unless they're so badly rusted in there, you're better off with a new caliper. We'll take this one out, rust it away by hand just to show you what it looks like. Stop it back down in there. No fluid coming out because, well, there's no fluid going through, brake line's blown. So we're just going to gently snug this back down for now, now that we know that we've got it loose and we can complete the brake job on this side. Pick off all the tools, and we'll get it all moved over to the other side of the car and repeat the process again over there. Now at this point, the construction noise is all gone, but I didn't even bother to start putting any of my own audio into this. We'll get everything cleaned up on this side and get it all moved over to the other side of the car. Put the wheel back on. Uh, he is currently missing a lug nut, which in this video I actually steal from the other side of the car. So we only got four over here. Uh, this way here is easier than explaining to you guys why I'm only putting four lug nuts on. So we'll get these snugged down. Not tight. You still want to have a little bit of looseness in these, and I'll show you why. I like to basically pound on the wheel a few times and settle everything into its natural position. You see, these are still extremely loose. Uh, starting to get to that snug point. The wheel's binding hard. Uh, that rotor and all that rust. But I'll bang on the wheel and that usually centers everything and helps to loosen stuff up. But again, I'm going to be dealing with that again off camera.